This video demonstrates endoscopic images of normal and dysfunctional eustachian tube orifices. This is a 4 millimeter, 30 degree endoscope being passed through the left nostril to visualize the nasopharyngeal orifice of a normal eustachian tube. The subject is saying KKK to elevate the soft palate and levator and then performing some swallows. Next we see a yawn for maximal dilation of the tube at its valve area close to the isthmus. Now a swallow again and seen in slow motion the palate elevates, the lateral pharyngeal wall moves inward then laterally and finally the tensor veli palatini dilates the valve area to open the tube. Seen in very slow motion initially the palate will elevate and the lateral pharyngeal wall moves medially then laterally and then finally now there is dilation of the tubal lumen at the final step and then in rotation of the medial cartilaginous lamina or posterior wall. We now see a fiber optic image of a patient with severe allergies and GE reflux there is significant mucosal edema and almost polypoid changes. There is also yellow discoloration thought to be atrophy of the mucosa and visualization of underlying fat. This patient has severe allergic rhinitis. This is a left eustachian tube and we see a large adenoid which presses into the posterior wall during swallow and actually forces it anteriorly to block the eustachian tube orifice at the very moment it should be dilating. Here in slow motion we see the adenoid which normally does not cover the eustachian tube orifice instead contacts the posterior cushion of the eustachian tube and forces it anteriorly during swallow to block the tube paradoxically just when it should be opening. This is a fiber optic image of a right eustachian tube in a woman with cholesteatoma. Although the tube initially looks patent, we see the tensor veli palatini on the left in the lateral wall with uncoordinated movements. There is no pattern to the dilatory efforts. This is a patient with typically normal eustachian tube function but now has an upper respiratory infection and otitis media with effusion. Note the diffuse edema and excessive mucus. But there is excellent muscular function in the levator and tensor. This is a patient, a left eustachian tube with severe chronic otitis media and there's an unusual double elevation of the palate and levator. Here we see in slow motion the first wave of the palate elevating and a second wave which paradoxically closes the eustachian tube orifice at the time it should be dilating. This is a fiber optic image of a right eustachian tube with coordination problems between the levator and tensor muscles. We see normal elevation of the medial cartilaginous lamina by the levator but then the lamina or posterior wall returns to normal position just as the tensor is dilating when both should be dilated at the same time. We see in slow motion normal levator movement relaxing and then dilation in a delayed fashion of the tensor. Once again in slower motion levator function then relaxing then tensor trying to dilate futilely because the levator has already relaxed, a lack of coordination. This is a right eustachian tube demonstrating hypercontraction of the tensor veli palatini seen on the right in the lateral wall. Just at the moment when the tensor should be dilating the eustachian tube we see tremendous bulking up of the muscle and paradoxical obstruction of the eustachian tube lumen. Here seen in slow motion there are deep folds in the muscle. This is a patchless eustachian tube on the right side. We see on the lateral wall or anterior wall an area which is normally convex 
superiorly, and yet in this patient it is completely concave along the length of the eustachian tube, causing the aeration defect. 